Hello lab, so today we're going to uh, Hello lab, so today we're going to learn how to do a western blot. All right, but there's a few things that you should do before starting a western blot, and that's something called a Bradford assay. This assay, you can do a standard curve of BSA uh, so that you can get an estimate of how much protein uh, your sample has. Why? Because you want to load a certain amount of protein uh, for western blots, you want to load 25 to 30 micrograms of protein. So here's an example. You do your breath foot assay and it turns out that your samples have 6 um, milligrams per ml. Right? An easy way to do it is to dilute this to 1 milligram per ml so that you can load 30 microliters of your sample which will give you your 30 micrograms of protein. All right, this is very important to do because you want to have uh, blots that you can quantify. So with this, you can get a reasonable uh, size uh, bands that you can later normalize to your uh, housekeeping protein. Uh, this could be beta acting or anything else that uh, you might use, uh, but this is a very important step. Here's the electrophoresis setup. Um, it allows you to run and separate the proteins based on size. Uh, we have uh, a chamber that allows you to either run two gels or four gels. Uh, so if you run two gels, you only need one of the sets. Uh, and then if you run two, uh, four, you have, you have to run the second set. Uh, if it so happens that, like me, you're only running two uh, three gels. Uh, here is this um, little fake gel cassette uh, that will allow you to fill the chambers of this um, so that you can run three gels. All right. Uh, make sure that you have a running buffer uh, and that all of the chambers and everything is uh, running buffer is added to the level that it's uh, needed. You can find many formulas uh, for the running buffer. You can make it as a 10x concentration and then dilute it uh, one part of the 10x stock solution to nine parts of the ionized water and then you make your 1x running buffer. Um, I suggest you making the 10x stock since uh, if you have to run many gels, uh, you might run out of it very, very fast. All right, so next I'm going to show you here real quick how to run, how to set up your gels into the uh, cassettes. So the gel comes in this packet, all right? You're good. Make sure you wear uh, gloves. There's a lot of uh, nasty chemicals in these gels, uh, so you just open it and then here's two main things you need to know that about this gel there's a protective band on the bottom of it uh, in order for the electrophoresis to run you need to take it off and then also you need to take off this protective uh, apparatus not sure the name of it uh, that it's keeping your wells all right uh, this is the trickiest part, because if you're not even on how to take it off, then your wells will get uh, distorted. Uh, it, you can get a pipette tip and fix them, but you should try your best not to disrupt your wells. A good trick is to make sure that it comes off evenly in all the sides, and that you do it gentle and slowly All right now you can check uh, how well your gel looks in the wells they all look fine right. uh, I'm gonna need my fake gel thing to close up my cat uh, cassette and then you want to make sure that the, first of all that the wells are facing this this side of the wells right so like basically the, the, 
the open side is facing the inside of the uh, cassette and make sure that you place it very well in and then now you look at the opposite side and you make sure it's all the way to the bottom of it and then close the cassette a way for you to know if you uh, correctly align the gels to the cassette is to put a little bit of running buffer into this chamber of the cassette and if you observe any leaks which here we do not have any if there's no leaks that means that you successfully uh, placed the cassette uh, correctly Now that the gels are placed into the chamber with the running buffer, we're ready to load our samples. Uh, so the wells and the gels come numbered. Uh, so we have one, two, three, up to 10 wells. So usually the first well is reserved for the ladder. So your protein standards that I uh, will give you the approximate side of your uh, targeted protein. For my preference, I label my test tubes with the number uh, that the sample uh, of the well that the sample should go in. Uh, this just makes it simple, so you don't have to take uh, check your notes, say make sure that you're loading the correct sample. You just have to check uh, the correct number. Uh, usually. Uh, for the standards, uh, in the instructions of the standards when you order them, they give you uh, uh, how much volume of the standard should be loaded. Uh, for mine, uh, it's 10 microliters. Uh, and in my samples, uh, I usually load uh, 30 microliters. Uh, but remember, you need to establish the concentration of protein in your sample by running the Bradford assay, and that way it give you an idea and the mathematical uh, correctness of how much volume of your sample you should be loading. Alright? Alright guys, so loading the wells is not that bad, but it does require to be gentle and careful because you don't want to go through your gel because that's going to mess up uh, how your protein is going to be separated. Uh, and also, you don't want to, by ac accident, contaminate the well, uh, like the next door well. Uh, so right now I'm going to load my protein standard. So it's going in uh, well number one. So you kind of want to touch with the tip uh, the side of the plastic and then gently press the pipetter. And then slowly load your sample. And as you get to the end, you want to give a little push and then lift and that's the first loaded well. Now I am going to do this again with my sample. So right now I my sample is number two. So I'll just get uh, for this one it's a 30 microliters. Again, this may vary uh, based on your concentration of protein. We can figure it out how much uh, volume you should be loading to get you the desired amount of protein loaded into the gel. All right. Um, here we go. Now again, go against the plastic above the well, insert it, do not go too deep, and then slowly insert the liquid all right and then basically you do this over and over again for each sample for each gel that you're running 
So remember you need to have your uh, control protein, usually it's beta actin, and then uh, the gels for your desired uh, protein that you want to target later on. Uh, with the uh, when you trans do the transfer to the membrane. Okay. Now that the all the wells are loaded, we're ready to run the electrophoresis. So here we have the machine, and these uh, it's what I have it set up for uh, 200 volts and 30 for 30 minutes. Uh, even though the timer is set up, you still need to pay attention uh, on how fast the lanes are running. Um, so that you know you don't overrun it anyway. Uh, you can always stop the run uh, as soon as you see the uh, the ladder completely being formed. All right. Even though the timer is set for 30 minutes, do keep a close eye on the, the proteins and how well they're running and how fast. Uh, you can always uh, stop the run even though it's not completed. Uh, when the complete ladder is seen uh, or when all your lanes or all the proteins reach this black line. All right. Also make sure that uh, you uh, have the correct colors uh, aligned. All right. So red and black and also in the cap uh, black and red. Because right, if not, then the voltage and all the elect uh, electricity will not run correctly and then you will not have uh, the electrophoresis run uh, correctly. Right, so we just secure the whole chamber, the whole our apparatus. Right, make sure it's well secure and then hit run. A confirmation that everything uh, inside is completely correct is if you see bubbles. If you see the bubbles, that means that electrophoresis is occurring uh, completely, that there's current going on, and then everything is you know, going as planned. For the transfer, you're going to need uh, a stack uh, with the membrane. Uh, there's many ways to do it, there's very many difficult ways to do it, but this is basically the easiest one. You can get one of this trans block turbo, which already has uh, all the buffers, all the, uh, the membrane, it has a membrane, and basically it allows you to make a sandwich uh, that would help you uh, do the transfer of the proteins from the gel to the membrane. Uh, this is the one I use. I had no problems with it. Uh, one catch though is that if you use this one, you're probably going to need a trans turbo machine. Um, this one, these two go along together uh, so that the transfer of proteins uh, can, uh, can be done in minutes compared to other, pro uh, other protocols where you basically have to wait hours or even overnight uh, to get your proteins transferred. After the uh, proteins are transferred onto the membrane, you're gonna have to put the membrane in uh, some sort of container um, so that you can do the washes that uh, are required. So uh, after the transfer, you have to uh, incubate your membrane with the primary antibody usually is the antibody to your protein uh, the protein that you like to observe and then you're gonna have to also incubate it later on uh, with a secondary antibody which complements the primary antibody All right so usually if uh, you use a rabbit primary then you use a goat anti-rabbit secondary uh something like that uh but going back to the containers uh there is out there uh containers made specifically for this type of process uh but you know if you don't have the money to get those uh or prefer to spend the money on other stuff you can also go to the dollar store and get some really good containers so the trick to the container is to make sure that they're small enough so that you don't need as much volume 
uh, to cover the membrane. Uh, volume is going to become relevant when you're trying to uh, make your primary antibody in a uh, blocking buffer. So if you require a lot of volume, you're going to require a lot of primary, so it's going to become very expensive uh, when you run out of your primary. Uh, see, so uh, these containers, you can find them at the lab. Um, they've been reused. This one uh, specifically has been passed down from grad student to grad student. Uh, and then this one I got because I needed uh, a little bit more. They both work very well. Uh, again, you want something that's small, but not too small that your protein will, uh, I mean, not your protein, your membrane will be folded in some way or it won't fit. All right. Um, you can become clever enough. Uh, you can, you know, look for your own or uh, these you can, you can use as well. Great. Now that the protein, the electrophoresis process has been completed, we are ready for transferring the proteins from the gel to the membrane. Alrighty. So now that I have taken out the cassette or the, the, the gel, right? Uh, it's still in this plastic casket, right? So now we have to carefully remove uh, the gel in, out of the plastic so that we can uh, transfer into the membrane. But first, let's get our membrane ready. So we have our cassette here for the Transblot Turbo Machine. And we have our packet uh, containing our membrane. So we just open up real nice and carefully. So in this packet, they're very well labeled. So it says here bottom and then the top, right? So you want to get the bottom and the bottom contains your membrane. So you want to place that first. All right, I'll place it real nice here and then try to, if there's any layers, any bumps, kinks, stuff like that. Uh, if your membrane is not so quite placed, uh, well on the stack you can move it now very gentle uh, and then accommodate it and then you want to use a roller so that you can take out all of the bubbles uh, out if you have a bubble especially right in the band of your protein it's gonna make it hard to quantify so you don't want any bubbles all right, so that is done. So now we're ready for our gel. Uh, one of the main things uh, that you really don't want to do is uh, break your gel. If you break your gel, uh, you would have to rerun your samples. Uh, there's nothing else you can do to sa uh, save it. Uh, if you transfer into the membrane, it won't transfer uh, correctly. So this is requires a lot of you know gentle heat. we use this tool and then here's some arrows you can uh, kind of move it so that you can crack the seals of the plastic seals remember you are trying to crack it and it's it's securely tight but you don't want to break your uh, gel so be gentle Now that everything is out, we gently lift one of the sides and then now we expose the, the gel. Next thing you want to do is you want to get rid of your wells. You don't need your wells anymore. Uh, so you can kind of align them using a fine forcep and then you want to get a blade and then cut, remember, uh, you don't want to break the gel, so make sure you just push it and then slide it gently out. And all you're cutting out is 
your well. Alright. Now that we have taken out the wells, we are ready to pick up the gel very gently. Remember, you don't want to break it. If you break it, you gotta so start all over again. Alright, so we just gently pick up this place. So it's already up a little bit, so I'm gonna use that. And then when you place the gel onto the membrane, it's a one-time thing. You don't want to, if for example, you don't position your gel uh, very well onto the membrane, it's a done deal. You don't want to pick up your gel and reposition. Uh, that's only going to make it worse. All right, there's a little bubble. Now, you're ready to put the top stack on top of that gel and then again you want to get rid of any bubbles so we're going to use the roller to roll away any bubbles especially in the areas where you predict your protein to be at because uh, again it could mess up your quantification uh, so once again I'm going to uh, do my second yell. So again, I'm running three, but it depends on what you're looking for. It depends on your experiment. So I'm going to do it again, since this is such an uh, important step. I open my packet, get my bottom. So you position all of the gels that you want and all the membranes and transfer, you close the cassette and then you place it into one of the rows. With this machine you have um, a lot of options so depending on how many membranes you have. I have two mini so this is the setup for it. So you go menu, turbo too many and then wrong set and this is set for the transfer alrighty now that the transfer is done the seven minutes minutes has have passed now we can uh, take care of our membranes so here in the containers I had labeled it uh, as the proteins and the time points of that I'm doing for my experiment. And in here, there's a TVS buffer. So the membranes uh, are going to be washed for 10 minutes in TVS after transfer. Now, what I wanna show you here is that uh, when you run multiple, multiple membranes for uh, different proteins, uh, it's a good trick to um, kind of label your protein in a way so that you know which protein uh, you want to observe in that membrane. All right, so now we just lift the stack and now we can see that the gel, it's completely empty because we have successfully transferred all the proteins of the gel onto the membrane. All right. And also what you don't want to do is to dry up your membrane. So as soon as you take it out of the stack, uh, you need to transfer it to the TBS. Uh, always keep your membrane in buffer. Uh, so now uh, these are going to be different membranes for different proteins. So I am going to cut one of the corners that I know there's no protein uh, that won't affect anything that I would uh, want to observe later on. So I'm just gonna cut one corner. And that's how we going to di differentiate the proteins. Now I have my container with my buffer, my TBS buffer, and I'm going to put my membrane 
right there. Make sure that the membrane is completely submerged in the buffer. Now for this one, let's do it again. We go empty gel, very fun stuff. And now I want to cut this corner, an opposite corner for it so that I know what type of protein I am supposed to observe for this membrane. Good. And it goes into the buffer. All right, from here, the protein, the membranes are going to be washed for 10 minutes uh, while gently uh, steering it. Uh, you can get this uh, mechanical stirs uh, and then with the timer and then after that they will be put into a uh, blocking buffer so that the TVS gets dumped and then trans uh, changed to blocking buffer and then the membranes are incubated for one hour under uh, the blocking buffer uh, and then uh, after the blocking buffer for one hour uh, they get their uh, primary antibodies. For blocking buffer, you have uh, two options. You can do uh, the BSA route or the milk route. Uh, BSA uh, could be very expensive. So, I mean, if you have uh, the possibility of doing BSA blocking buffer, uh, that's fine. But if not, you can also have this option, which is this non-fat dry milk. Uh, you can do 5% of it diluted in TBST buffer. So that's TBS buffer with uh, tween 20. Uh, you can see the formulas in the lab notebook or also uh, there's many formulas out there you can find in Google. Uh, this is what I use. Um, didn't really uh, cost any trouble or anything. Pretty easy uh, to make as well as, as, as we go. Um, it's really good. Uh, it's, it's meant to block non-specific binding. So make sure that uh, whatever antibody uh, you choose, it bound, binds to the, your protein that you're targeting and not any other protein. So now that we have completed the transfer of uh, the proteins from the gel to the blot, uh, the, the membrane is immediately transferred into TBS buffer and you want to shake them for 10 minutes at a reasonable speed so in this case 100 for 10 minutes now 10 minutes have gone by and uh, now it's uh, you're ready to put your membrane uh, with the blocking buffer so what the blocking buffer does is it's going to avoid any non-specific binding. Uh, you can use, there's two types that you can use, whether it is the milk, 5% non-fat milk, or 5% uh, BSA. The choice is up to you. Uh, so right now, uh, so that you can put the blocking buffer in, you want to pour out your buffer, your TBS buffer, and then you don't want to pour onto the membrane. You want to pour to the sides of the membrane. All right. All right, and we have our blocking buffer and we're going to block our block uh, for, in this case, one hour. All right, and again, you, you do it with gent uh, gentle shaking. Why uh, your blood incubates with the blocking buffer you want to prepare your primary uh, antibody. Uh, in this video, I will not show you how to prepare it because it depends on what type of antibody you uh, use. So the dilution factor, so it's very smart for you to follow uh, the instructions that come with the antibody. Uh, the antibody is the primary and the secondary are better to be prepared with blocking buffer. Again, because you want to avoid non-specific binding. Now that we have blocked the membrane with blocky buffer for an hour, now we're ready to add the primary antibody. And again, it all depends on what you're using. So it all goes the same way. You want to pour out 
the liquid you had in before and then now pour over the membrane just on the sides of the container all right and then that's our primary all right so now this one we're going to leave it overnight so I want to set up the timer for 16 hours or above. All right, and we put it uh, at 40 degrees Celsius. That's why it's in the fridge. All right. So after overnight, the next day when you come in, you're doing, you're going to do a series of washes. Uh, and also, you're going to incubate your uh, blot with the secondary, which is going to amplify your signal. So after the primary, you come and do three washes, all right, with TBST buffer, all right. This is Tween 20, uh, which is going to help uh, rinse out any non-binding antibodies, so any residual antibodies that did not bind to the protein of your of your interest after that you're going to uh, have blocking buffer or TBST uh, with your secondary all right secondary antibody I prefer to do it with blocking buffer because it prevents non-specific binding and you're gonna let it uh, incubate for two hours all right after those two hours you're going to again wash your block because you want anything that was not bound to your target protein to be rinsed off so you want to do three time uh, TBST buffer and all of these washes the small washes you're going to do for 10 minutes each wash all right and then uh, some signal uh, developers uh, procedures, uh, sometimes they don't want, uh, or they really, really don't want for you to have tween uh, in your blood. So what you wanna do is to wash them three times again. Um, but in this case, you wanna do it with TBS so that you take, you get rid of uh, the tween 20. After this, now you're ready to develop your signal. Uh, your signal can be developed in multiple ways. It just depends on what you like to use. Uh, you can use uh, chemoluminescence, which is one of the ones that it's uh, highly recommended since it is a good signal, strong signals, um, and you can have digital copies of it. But that procedure can be very tricky, so make sure you read the protocols and the requirements uh, for your signal developer. So how long is this procedure going to take you, you may ask? Well, here you have a total of 3 minutes, 30 minutes. So here you have a total of 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. So your washes are a complete uh, total length of 90 minutes plus your 2 hours of secondary antibody incubation. So long story short, this procedure will take you a long time. So prepare. All right, viewers, so we reached the end of this video. Uh, here I explain a lot of uh, the Western blots uh, in a very general way, but if you need more details about it, please leave us a comment and we'll get to it uh, as soon as we can. Uh, but before you leave, don't forget to hit that like button over there. And also don't forget to turn on your notifications so that you can keep track of our latest videos. All right, have a good day.